at the Sun Valley here, your host of Never Say Never, and I am absolutely honored to be sitting here with Mary Francis. She is the founder of Well Springs Living and uh, helping the survivors of human trafficking, and we're going to get into that a little bit today. I know I've been talking about it a lot. I've made it here to Georgia. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So glad you're here. It's beautiful. I love it. And I'm honored to be sitting here with you. And basically what we're doing is we came to see, I came to see you through the grace of God. Yes. It was, I'm starting this outreach with this person and then that person and then now I am here with you. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad that you made it all the way to Georgia. I'm excited to talk to your audience. Yes, yes. So um, we'll go ahead and start off with a couple questions that I have for you and then I know you have some things that sure. you want to share with us to be able to take back for our event that we're preparing right. and we can make this worldwide yes. because that's what we need to do. We do. You're right. And people don't understand that. You guys, what the importance is, is this is happening right here in the United States of America. These are our children that are in jeopardy and we don't get it. I didn't get it. But Miss Mary Francis knows all about it and she's going to share it and here we go. I wrote some important notes. Okay. We're going to go from there and then um, let, let's do this. Okay. okay. What exactly does sex slavery look like today? Well, I think that what we believed about it several years ago was that it's happening in Thailand and in India and Mexico, but it certainly isn't happening in America. And if it is, it's happening with foreign nationals. And what is the truth of the matter is that there are more young children being exploited in the United States today than ever before. More slaves in America than before the Civil War. So that's pretty much intolerable. And so we need to open our eyes and realize that every girl that's walked through our residential facility for girls seeking a way to become whole were born in America. They could have been your daughter, they could have been my granddaughter. And when we realize that, then we have to take a responsibility for their recovery and for the prevention of this happening ever again. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, as I was explaining to you before the interview, mm -hmm. I was unaware as well. Right. I, I didn't think that these young girls, but you think about it, how many times you see um, like the Walsh, Josh Walsh, I believe, mm -hmm. with the girls that are missing and have been missing yep. for all these years, they could be a part of this, yes. this slavery. And um, that's scary. Yeah. Being a mother of two daughters, for me, and I know you also have children, I mean, that's a scary thing. Uh, let me ask you, what is it that your ministry does to help these families, um, or these ladies actually, or young ladies recover? So we started in 2001 just working with young women who were in desperate places. Little do we know that the very first young woman that walked through our doors in 2001 was a traffic survivor. And just like you, I had no idea what was happening. And so when she's telling me her story, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, I ran away from home when I was 16, and he was 29, and we went to Kansas, and this happened and that happened, and I'm just like, well, that's very unfortunate. But I didn't put a name on it as trafficking. And she was beautiful. She could have been my daughter, actually. And uh, actually kind of is my spiritual daughter <laughs> now, <laughs> by default. And so we were just serving these young women, realizing that the core issue was child and sexual abuse. So we focused in on how do we help them heal in their body, mind, and spirit. And so we want them to have a healthy lifestyle. We want them to heal from the pain that they've had. So there's therapy involved, group therapy individualized therapy and we know that true healing only happens through God and so we want them to find God not by us saying believe because I believe but we love them in such a way that that makes them hungry for what is it that you have and I want your God to be my God and so that's how we serve for until 2007 we were only working with young women over the age of 18 but our mayor, Mayor Shirley Franklin, came to me in February of 2007 and said, I know what you're doing for women, but we need your help with young girls that are being bought and sold on the streets of Atlanta. And I thought, like you, oh, it's not really happening, that's sensationalism, and it's probably from another country. 
But the more I researched and I found out the truth, that's when I could not do something. And that's what my prayer is for those people that will listen to this is that, you know, I'm now aware and I can't live my normal American life without being involved. And so I did a lot of things. I went to the jails, the juvenile detention center, and I saw that when a young girl was picked up by the police, she went into this eight by eight concrete cell and she was a victim. And I couldn't sleep at night. My heart was so broken. And so we began to research, how can we be involved? And so we opened a residential facility for girls ages 12 to 17 for them to walk out of this pain and be supported for their life. And so with a younger under 18, your focus is body, mind, and spirit, but it also has to be getting them on grade level in school. And so there's an individualized academic plan for every girl that walks through our door. And what we know is because we work with them, a small group, there are only 15 girls at a time, we are focused on them. We're believing the best about them, even though they sometimes don't respond to you in the most appropriate way. We're going to believe that there's great potential behind that girl. And what we found is that it really is. Oh, and that just hit me really hard because here's this young child, and I'm going to skip down some questions because I already know what I wanted to ask you. What are the, I'm going to ask you first and then say, so what are the average ages of our young ladies that are victims? So we know that the average age for a girl that falls prey to this is between the ages of 12 to 14. And I think that's important for us to know the word fall prey. She does not wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to allow myself to sell my body to these 50, 60 year old men. I mean, what 12 year old wants that? Exactly. No. And so what happens is we know that trafficking is a business, a very lucrative business. And at Metro Atlanta alone is a $290 million business, which is twice of what the drug business is. Because a girl can be sold again and again and again, where you sell your drug, then you gotta go get more drugs. And so because it's a lucrative business, the traffickers know how to get their product, and so they are at places where young girls are, and they tell them what an insecure young 12 to 14 year old would want to hear. And quite frankly, it doesn't matter what any background of a girl 12 to 14, they're pretty insecure anyway. Yeah. But add to that that you that most of the girls that we serve are runaways or they're le they're in deprived situations or they've experienced childhood sexual abuse. So there's already pain in their life and they capitalize on that pain and work toward choose, them to choose to believe what the trafficker is saying. And then there's the bait and switch. And then he starts saying, you've got to sell yourself. I understand as a, as a teenager, you go through that stage of, I'm, I'm rebelling, mm -hmm. I don't know who I am, I don't know where I fit in, right. and then here comes this guy who makes you feel like you're everything that you want to be, yeah. and then bam, you're in a closet with five other girls, if right. I'm not mistaken, at times, and uh, I'm having to pull myself together here because this is kind of touchy. Think about this, guys. You have a young girl from 12 to 14, she goes out with her friends maybe one night, party, cute guy comes up to her. And the next day she wakes up in a closet. Then she's addicted to drugs. Then after being sexually assaulted multiple times, not just once, but multiple times every single night, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, yeah. the quota is like $2,000 a night from yeah. the research I made. And then they get in trouble for drugs and then they get thrown into a little box. Yeah. That's, that's the reality me. of what the girls that we serve have experienced. You're right. And these girls are here from the United States. You just yeah. said Atlanta has how many? We don't even we know, don't know all the numbers, but there's a projection of 100 girls a night that are being exploited in Metro Atlanta. And they're domestic. They're born in America, girl. They're not shipped in from Africa or anywhere else. They're our girls that are being exploited. So as you're telling me this, you know what I'm picturing? I'm picturing those signs that we, every single one of us, we see these signs posted at Walmarts, Publix, mm -hmm. missing girl, 13 yeah. runaway, missing girl left on this day. Yeah. These girls, think 
about it. Let's put it together. We don't want to believe it's happening. Trust me, I have children. I don't want to believe it's happening. But think about those faces that used to be on the milk cartons that are now on our Walmart built like sticky boards. These could possibly be girls yeah. that are suffering yeah. from this. What is it that we could do as a community to put it into this? Sure. Well, we actually, as an organization, put together some little cards, and they're just fit in your wallet like a business card. We call them the go cards. Like, what can I do? What can I go and do to make a difference? And one thing is just know the signs. And so on one side, it talks about if you see a girl with an older man, might not be her father or her uncle, be suspicious. It doesn't hurt to report. It might not be true. It'd be better to be that than anything else. There's an anonymous tip line that you can report if you think that someone is being trafficked in. It's a human trafficking hotline, 888-373-7888. So anywhere in the United States, you see an older man with a younger girl, you can make that report. Chronic runaway. So if you are, your children are teenagers and you know this girl that's like not having a good home life and she's in and out of school. Truancy is one of the first signs. That's something that is a sign that a girl could be trafficked. If she has a tattoo on her neck or on her ankle, one of the things that traffickers do is they mark, brand their girls so other traffickers won't take their property. That's the reality. That's a sign that you might want to report that this girl could be being trafficked. If you see her with expensive clothes and perfume and purses and she doesn't normally have that, that's something that's suspicious. And if you know of substance abuse, that's a problem that is part of this culture because the trafficker has to keep her kind of sedated or helped up so she can perform. And then you need to know that the average age is between 12 to 14 and that there are a lot of girls being exploited and that they are American born girls. And so knowing those sides are important. I think it's very important that our hearts are open to the fact that we're going to have to take responsibility for this. It's not going to be government that changes this. It's not even going to be the church that changes this. It's going to be the community. It's going to be individuals that say no more. I am not going to stand by and just take care of my children while other children are being exploited. In fact, I'm going to have my eyes open and my heart open to children outside of my family circle. So in school, if you have a young girl or a young boy who you see them not engaging, you see them not having the things that are needed to become strong, you see them not exploring and understanding their worth, then find a way to build into their life. You know, if you have, if you're a single person and you've got a niece or a nephew, then you speak the words that a trafficker would speak. In other words, you say, hey, I believe you can do anything. I want to help you. Let me know any way I can support you so you can reach your potential. Because really, if we have that why inside of our hearts, that we want every child in America, all over the world, to reach the potential of who God created them to be, then we'll do what it takes. I mean, that's what drives me. Because I see girls that walk through our doors, and quite frankly, the minute I see them, when they walk in our doors, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, how can that life ever be repaired? But the reality is that these girls are smart and resilient. If they've survived, they're smart and they're resilient. And if we can just provide a safe place and bring to them what they need, they blow our mind with what they can become. And that can happen not just in a residential program, that can happen in our communities all over America. And so I feel like if we take that responsibility, we're gonna make a difference. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I'm just smiling because everything you're saying, this is what Never Say Never is all about. I said that we were gonna do everyone from every walk of life and this, all of my stories have been important, but this one is just so important because this is the definition of never say never. Mm -hmm. It is loving a survivor victim or at risk child. Or an at risk child and loving them and showing them what love really is so they don't fall prey. And if they have fell prey, giving them that hope. Mm -hmm. And then once they get yeah. that hope, they yeah. build that faith yes. and then they can become yes. whoever they want to be.
very, very, very touchy subject, guys, and I know that you don't want to hear it and you don't want to believe it, and that's the, not that you don't want to hear it, but it's hard to believe. It's hard to believe. It's extremely hard. As I'm listening to you, it's like I, I have to catch myself. I didn't believe sometimes. it. I didn't believe it until I had seen it firsthand. And not everybody can see it firsthand. And so what you have to do is recognize that we live in a culture that's not really friendly for children to grow up with the innocence that maybe you grew up with. And so realize that. Don't be afraid of it. I think it's hard for us to admit that someone born in America could actually do something like this. We just don't want to believe that. But unfortunately, it's it's an evil, and, and evil is everywhere. And, and Paul talks about we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We actually are not fighting against the trafficker. We're fighting about against the evil that the enemy has come against our children. I mean, how better can you destroy a nation than you take the children who are most vulnerable and turn their lives into nothing? So if you think about that, then you understand, oh, that's a strategy of the enemy? What's God's strategy? God's strategy is this, let's not let anything keep a, a child from coming to me. So let's do what we can to rescue those who've been harmed, to prevent the harm from happening in the first place. And then we will see a change in our culture.